If you're moving to Alaska, you're probably thinking to yourself, hey, am I going to be a good fit up here? Is Alaska going to be for me long term? Well, I'm going to answer that question probably today and kind of answering the top six types of people who should not move to Alaska. These are going to be the people or the types of people who are usually just not going to not going to vibe with the tribe up here. And this aren't, you know, it's not necessarily saying if you fall into any of these categories, you know, it's for sure going to be a, a no starter but it is going to be something you're probably going to be swimming upstream. So before we get started, though, do make sure you get this video a like, make sure you subscribe. And without further ado, let's go and jump into today's video talking about the top six types of people who should not move to Alaska. Now, the first type of person that I would definitely put on this list is people who really need the flex culture. Now, if you're not aware of what this is, this is how's the best way for me to describe this? This is the dude that's at the, the red light and he just lives for the moment where he can like drive up to the red light and he's got his Lamborghini or Mercedes or whatever nice car it is. That's that's his jam. You know, you can see he obviously has the better car than everybody else. And this is really just the type of person who feels like they have to one up everybody and they attach a lot of value to themselves and how they dress or possessions that they have or the title or accomplishment, awards, anything like that, that is gonna be a lot of flex culture. If that is you, Alaska might not be a great place because the, the vibe up here is things are gonna be a little bit more slower paced. People are definitely competitive, but it's not gonna be because we want someone to see it and we want to impress people. It's just gonna be because that's what we do. We wanna be the best, but not necessarily because we wanna impress somebody. So if you are somebody that's a big advocate or a big consumer, I guess you could say, of the flex culture wherever you're at, you know, you're gonna be welcomed up here, but just know you're probably gonna be the source of a lot of uh, <laughs> <laughs> going to be the source of a lot of uh, criticism is not the word. Mockery. Mockery is the word I'm looking for. <laughs> so just be aware that that's, uh, that's going to be coming down the pipe for you. The second type of person who probably should just stay away from Alaska is going to be people who are not expecting to actually work when they get up here. You know, i.e. people who think that they can come up here and just live off the PFD and, oh, the state's going to pay me to actually live up here. If you've been watching this channel for any amount of time, you know my opinion on this mindset, but no, the PFD is not designed to be something that you live off of. It's designed more to just be a little supplement for whatever it is that you have. Usually the amount that you're gonna be getting, it's gonna fluctuate all over the place. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not. This past year, I think it was just over $3,200 per person. So, I mean, if you have a large... The third type of person that I would put on this list is the type of person who really, really, really needs warm weather. So this should be a give me, but if you're somebody who really needs the tropics and you really need the beach time and you really need to just feel the heat and be able to get out there and enjoy the sun, then Alaska might not be the great place for you to live here full time. Okay, you might be looking at doing some kind of a snowbird situation where you're coming up here during the summertime, but the winters are going to be long, they're going to be dark, and they're going to be cold. So if you're somebody who really needs that that warmth and you really need that sunlight, you know, Alaska for a certain part of the year is going to be great and it's going to be awful for the other for the second half. So, you know, just be honest with yourself and um, expect that or, you know, just be aware, hey, I'm going to need to go take some long vacations during the winter months to, to kind of help, you know, get my, my sun and warmth fixed that way. So before we finish up today's video, let's take a break real quick here. If you've been watching for a while, you do know that I host the Alaska Journey podcast. And on that podcast, I interview people who have recently moved up here and have them explain what their stories are. So do make sure to go check that out because in those videos, you do get a lot of good tips and tricks and hear people's stories. So no reason not to. Link for that is going to be in the description section down below. And if you are considering moving up here as well, do make sure you go get a copy of my free relocation guide. And that relocation guide is going to answer kind of the general questions you have about moving up here. The way you get a hold of that is you just go to my website, register, and put relocation guide in the comments section so I know what to send you. Now, let's go and finish today's video talking about the six types of people who should not move to Alaska. Now, this, this one I get quite often. And... Um, different varying degrees per person because I think we all fall in this category at some level or another and that is people who don't really have a, a really realistic expectation for what Alaska is. If you expect Alaska to just be one enormous homestead where you get up here and oh everyone's got a dry cabin and everybody's just you know hunting bear meat and making jerky and living off the land and living off-grid my 
word, I hate that, that term off-grid, by the way, because usually it's not accurate, okay? You're talking about something more remote. Off-grid is legitimately off the grid. It's not actually tracked by anything, okay? It's, it's off-grid. You're talking about something that's more remote for most people is what they're talking about. But I digress. Alaska is not one big homestead. So, you know, just make sure your expectations are, are correct. Um, this is going to be a large state where you can find that if that's what you're looking for. But for the most part, you're going to find communities that are going to be just like most other communities in the, in the lower 48, except they're going to have much better scenery. Okay. But yeah, it's, it's not a homestead. It's not some utopia and you're going to find normal people here. Like you're going to find everywhere else. So, you know, just know what you're getting into and that's going to save you from a lot of disappointment down the line. You can set up the expectations that something's going to be this way and then you get there and it's not doesn't live up to those high expectations, then you're going to be disappointed. So that's the reason that I say that. Just know what's important to you. And if you really want that off-grid lifestyle, I swear if somebody mentioned, says off-grid to me one more time, I'm going to scream. But yeah, if you're looking for that, then you know we can certainly find it. But just know it's probably not going to be the way that some people on YouTube have made it sound, okay? This next group of people, this should be pretty, this again should be a gimme, but if you are somebody who already has a bad attitude about the state before you move up here, then Alaska is probably not going to be a great fit for you because, you know, as with anything, if you go into it with a bad attitude, of course, it's not going to be great. You're looking for reasons to hate it. You're looking for all the negatives. And if that's really where you're coming from, then you should just stay away. Okay. I, I don't know what your situation is. So yeah, I mean, if you're military, then, you know, it is what it is. You better, better get out and enjoy the, the state and uh, make the most of it. If you're staying in your barracks or staying on base all the time, yeah, it's not going to be great. And you're not going to enjoy the experience of living up here. If you get out and actually see more of the state, then you're going to enjoy it a whole lot more than if you stay within your, your own four walls. So if you have a bad attitude to begin with, then yeah, it's probably not going to be great. And all the Northern lights and um, all the mountains, all the, all the fishing, you know, everything Alaska has to offer is just going to be wasted on you. So have a good attitude going into it, or at least give it a shot. All right. And the sixth, type of person who might consider staying away from Alaska if you're moving up here is if you are relying 100% on public transportation. So the reason that I say this is because Alaska has a lot to offer, like a lot, but it's very difficult to be able to fully experience and enjoy the entire state if you're relying solely on public transportation. So I know in other places like, um, like New York and these larger cities, Having a car is more the exception and not the norm, but is definitely the exact opposite up here where you need to have a car to be able to get around and enjoy everything the state has to offer. You get to you know, a city like Anchorage, and yes, technically there's gonna be some public transportation here and there, but it's definitely not gonna open up the entire state to you. So you know, just know that if you're moving up here, one of the big reasons you're moving up here is to actually enjoy the state and to really enjoy the state, you're going to need your own vehicle. So if you don't have a vehicle right now, I'd recommend getting up here, get one, even if it's just a clunker and be able to, to get around the state that way. And, you know, then you can also make fun of the guy that needs that flex culture. Now, thank you for watching. I sure hope this has been useful for you. Again, make sure you get this video a like, subscribe if you haven't done so recently. Uh, recently already, and we'll see you next time.